So this game in general has a bunch of fun weapons that we can play. And we have very unique variety to choose from. But the big question is, which weapon can actually perform the best and do the highest damage and much more? So I've done a bunch of testing and here's the new tier list that you've been waiting for. If this sounds interesting to you, then let's get right into it. So then moving over to the first weapon that gets to be in the S tier and it is the Charge Blade. This is the most complicated melee weapon in the game. And the Charge Blade has two forms and a file system. The first sword and shield form is the default form. And it has nice blend of mobility, defense and attack. It combos revolves around alternating between swift and charged strikes with the sword and then the occasional shield jab. The main goal of the sword with shield form is to build up charge by hitting the monster and then storing the charge into the files. The files are then used in the second axe form. Axe form has high damage and impressive reach, but its true power comes from its elemental discharge attacks. Element discharge attacks use files and they cause file burst when they impact. The charge blade only has 5 files, 6 with capacity boost skill, so these explosive attacks are limited. Overall the sword with shield form is versatile with decent offensive and defensive capability, as well as excellent mobility. Then the axe form is capable of massive damage, then the guard points allow experienced hunters to stay protected, and finally the file effects can be accessed in both forms and they provide extra damage and or stunning power. Then for the second weapon we have the Greatsword, and we will place him right in the S tier. This is a slow heavy weapon with a massive damage potential. The Greatsword is the heavy artillery of a melee weapon. While simple at first, the Greatsword requires skill timing and spacing in order to get the most out of it. On offense, the Greatsword attacks with slow, thunderous swings that hit with high damage and stagger. Overall, this weapon has the highest damage per hit in the game, it has great range, high stagger multipliers make the part breaks and flinching easier, and then finally, the greatsword can be used to guard, although it's very sharpness consuming, but on the other hand, if you don't guard, then the sharpness consumption is extremely low. Then for the next weapon we have the sword with shield, and we will put him right in the A tier. This is the most versatile weapon in the game. He has high mobility, it has second highest attack speed in the game and a mix of cutting and blunt attacks, even a decent blocking ability and the option to use items and the slinger while still drawn. On offense, the sword with shield demands tenacity of its user. Hunters must stay on top of the monster and never stop attacking. The sword with shield specializes in rapid slashing combos, with the occasional shield bash thrown in. This makes it equally good at serving tails and stunning monsters. Thanks to the light quick nature of its attacks, the sword has good reaction time when it comes to defense. Hunters can run at full speed and dodge attacks without worrying about being locked into attack animation. The shield part of the sword with shield also allows hunters to block the monster attacks. While it's not the strongest block in the game, it's still an invulnerable part of this playstyle. Lastly, hunters are able to use items and their slinger while their weapon is still drawn. This ability is useful in countless ways, from healing and buffing yourself and teammates, to traversing the map and shooting at the distant targets. Overall, this is one of the most versatile and freeform weapons in the game. This is the only weapon that is able to use items without cheating. This as well is the only weapon that is able to perform a slinger burst from neutral position. And finally, you will naturally deal severe and blunt damage. So then for the fourth weapon we have the bow which will go right next to the sword and shield. So the bow is a ranged weapon capable of unleashing a never-ending barrage of arrows on the target. While simple to use, its mastery requires a detailed knowledge of the best combinations of attacks, coatings and a distance from the monsters. The bow doesn't use ammo in conventional sense, so hunters will never run out of arrows to fire. Instead, they use coatings, which apply special effects to the arrow. Lastly, the bow has an optimal range for firing, so being too far away from the target will cause shots to do less damage. The potential range will vary based on coding, and the crosser will glow orange when the monster is in optimal range. So overall, the bow has unlimited ammo. The ranged attacks allow for relative safety. 
he has good crowd control thanks to the coatings and arc shot. Then as well, this is one of the highest sustained DPS weapons in the game. And lastly, you will have high mobility, allowing for really good levels of survivability. And then for the last 8 tier weapon, we have the longsword. This is an elegant weapon that is well rounded. Its attacks are relatively fast, it deals decent damage and has very good reach. Hunters are able to roll out of the most longsword combos, which makes it a very mobile weapon. On top of this, its solid base move set has a unique spirit gauge system, so every non spirit attack from the longsword kills the spirit gauge a little bit. The gauge decays over time, however filling it up completely locks it for a time, preventing the decay. This gauge can be spent on spirit attacks that do extra damage in each level. So level 0 is the starting level, then level 1 will have a white glow on the spirit gauge and the long sword itself. Then level 2 will have a yellow glow and then finally level 3 is red. Each level raises the attack power of the long sword by a fair amount. If you don't do the spirit attack combo, then the glow around the spirit gauge will decrease. And when it's gone, the level will go down one by one. The higher the level, the faster the gauge glow will deplete. Keeping the spirit gauge at level 3 is very important for using the long sword effectively. So overall, this is a well-rounded weapon with decent damage, attack speed and mobility. So then for the next weapon, we have the dual blades that deserve to be placed right in the B tier. This weapon has whirlwind of blades that never stop spinning. You pretty much get zero defense for a chance of 100% offense capabilities, with the highest attack speed in the game. Dual blades chained together attacks rapidly, and rack up dozens of hits in the span of seconds. In their normal form, their attacks are basic slashes that can be adjusted on the fly, and they have very normal dodges. Hunters can also go into the demon mode, which increase their attack damage, changes their attack moves, grant resistance to knockback and changes their dodge to a quick dash. While in demon mode, hunters can chain together even longer attacks and build up a meter, which lets them enter an arch demon mode. Arch demon mode further increases the attack damage and changes the moveset, mastering the flow of the combat and the flow from basic mode to demon mode and then to the arch demon mode will turn hunters into an unstoppable flurry of blades. So overall with this weapon you can do the highest potential DPS out of all melee weapons. When using the elemental damage, demon and arch demon modes can chain combos using extremely high damage, and your dash dodging is fast and has superior iframe compared with the regular rolling. Then for the next B tier weapon we have the switch axe. This is a complicated weapon that is extremely powerful in the hands of a master. It has two forms, axe mode and a sword mode and file system that adds additional effects to the sword mode. Axe form has excellent reach and good mobility. It also is capable of rapid chain attacks that deplete stamina. Axe mode attacks can be combo and in a sword mode. Sword mode has rapid attacks with the added bonus of the file. So sword form is capable of elemental discharge attack where the hunter thrusts the sword forward, then builds up a rapid hitting power and then unleashes it in a massive explosion. Being in a sword form chains the file gauge and then the elemental discharge takes the chunk out of it. The gauge will recover naturally in axe form, but if it gets too low, it will have to be reloaded before the sword form can be used again. And files can give bonus attacks, elemental attacks, status effects or even drain a monster's stamina. So overall the switch axe has long combos, it has good reach and mobility in axe form, and then finally, the files can be used to add bonus effects for even more insane damage. Then for the next weapon we have the Insect Glaive, which we will place right in the B tier. This is a fast fluid weapon with a unique aerial moveset. On the ground the Insect Glaive has rapid combos with good range, that can be interrupted to dodge the monster. However, the Insect Glaive can also vault to launch itself in the air, which allows it to have access to its jumping attacks, without the help of the environment. While the aerial attacks deal pretty low damage, they can be used to evade sweeping attacks reposition or chase down a monster, making it one of the most mobile weapons in the game. The other half of the insect glaive is the king set. The king set is a large insect that sits on the hunter's arm. The hunter can command the king set to go away, hit the monster to collect essence and then even come back. Four types of the essence are available, which are red, orange, white and green. Red is the essential attack buff, 
White is movement set, orange is defense, and green is healing. Collecting red, white and orange buffs together will create a triple buff, which will increase the hunter's power even more. Overall, this weapon has extreme mobility, good at mounting monsters, very fast attacks, short ground attack animations, so it's easy to dodge the enemy attacks, and then finally, you will get great reach, both vertical and horizontal. Then for the last and final B tier weapon, we have the Heavy Bow Gun. This is the artillery of the ranged weapons. The Heavy Bow Gun specializes in high damage rounds at range. While it does not have the same special effects of the Light Bow Gun, the Heavy Bow Gun dishes out damage more reliably, breaks parts faster, and staggers monsters more easier. Like the Light Bow Gun, Heavy Bow Gun has a modding system available, allowing the hunters to customize their weapons slightly. For example, by reducing reload times or providing a limited capacity of the guard. Lastly, the bowgun has an optimal range for firing, so being too far away from the target will cause the shots to do less damage. Using a variety of specialized ammo, the heavy bowgun user is also able to act as a proficient support character, so you can recover, increase armor, and demon rounds can heal and buff allies quickly at a distance. So then moving over to the C tier, and the first weapon that gets to be in here is the hammer. This is a fast hard hitting weapon. As expected, the hammer deals only blunt damage, which makes it perfect for dealing stun damage and knocking out the monster. The hammer's basic attacks are surprisingly fast for such a heavy weapon, and they deal quite a bit of damage. They also have good chaining potential, and are very good at hitting the same spot over and over again, like the monster's head to rack up stun damage. Hammers can also do charged attacks. They have three charge levels, just like the Greatsword, but the hammer allows hunters to run around while charging up their attack. The type of charge attack also changes based on the hunter if it's standing still or moving when the attack goes on. Lastly, hammers can do a self buff while charging. This buff increases the attack damage and stun damage, and gives minor type of armor during charged attacks. So overall, the hammer was built to destroy monsters with brutal efficiency and it's very good at its job. So then for the next weapon we have the lance, and we will put him right next to the hammer. This is an unstoppable juggernaut weapon that is capable of going toe to claw with all but the strongest of monsters. Where the other weapons would falter or dodge, the lance blocks and retaliates. The lance shield is capable of blocking all but the strongest of attacks, and from the safety of the blocking stance, it can do a variety of attacks, but not blocking the lance only gets stronger with the ability to charge forward and skewer the monster hitting it repeatedly. The lance basic attacks are accurate and long reaching, allowing you to target enemies with ease. So overall he has the best guarding ability out of all weapons. You will do precise attacks, which minimizes risk of bouncing on several notable monsters. And then finally, the lance is surprisingly mobile due to the guard dash and dash attacks. Then for the last C tier weapon we have the light bow gun. This is the smallest of the three ranged weapons. Its small nature allows the hunter to repeatedly reposition and dodge incoming attacks. On offense, the light bow gun boasts the highest fire rate of the ranged weapons. It also specializes in support ammo, such as poison, paralysis and recovery, meaning it can reliably inflict a variety of status effects on the monster while still dealing damage. Like the heavy bowgun, the light bowgun has an optimal range for firing, so being too far away from the target will cause the shots to do less damage. So then for one of the last weapons, we have the hunting horn, that gets to be placed right in the D tier. This is a light-hearted weapon, which is a welcome addition to any hunting party. The main feature of the hunting horn is the ability to play music. Every attack adds a music note to the music sheet. And once the correct sequence of notes are played, a melody is made and added to the melody sheet. Hunters can play any melody they have stored at any time. The effects of a melody can range from attack buffs to immunity. Once the hunter has played all the melodies they wanted to, they can still attack the monster. Overall, the hunting horn is still a weapon after all, and a very valuable one at that. High damage and simple moveset makes it for a strong offense while dealing only blunt damage makes the hunting horn very good at stunning the monsters. So then for the last and final weapon we have the gun lance, which we will put right next to the hunting horn. 
This weapon has a lot of defense while having impressive range and damage. Its basic attacks are mix of stabs, sweeps and slams. Instead of charging ability like the lance, the gun lance can fire a shotgun blast. While naturally a ranged attack, those rounds deal true damage, ignoring the toughness of the monster and allowing damage to be dealt to parts that otherwise couldn't be touched. The gun lance can also charge up to unleash a massive explosion called the Vibrance Fire. Using the Vibrance Fire will cause the lance to overheat and it cannot be fired again until it has cooled down. Normal shots will not cause overheating, but they will chew through sharpness and must be reloaded every few shots. Lastly, the gun lance basic block is tied with the lance for the strongest in the game. However, it lacks the same special defense moves, which makes it a slightly weaker in that regard. And that's about it.